From KC Born and Bred Ownership comes the most affordable and highest quality in Chiefs merchandise. For Chiefs fans, by Chiefs fans. Whether it's officially licensed items or unique custom conversation pieces, no matter the size, from grandbaby to grandparent, Noble Apparel has something for everyone. Best prices, best quality, Noble Apparel. Now with five convenient Kansas City locations. Off North Oak, Vivian, Holmes, Westport, and 68th Street. The ultimate fan experience awaits at Noble Apparel. Guys, do you remember the days when you were ready to go at the drop of a hat in the bedroom? Now you can increase your performance and get that extra confidence in bed. Listen up. Blue Chew brings you the first chewable with the same FDA-approved active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, so you know they work. You can take them anytime, day or night, even on a full stomach. And since they're chewable, they work up to twice as fast as a pill, so you can be ready to go whenever the opportunity strikes. Blue Chew has made all the difference in the bedroom for me personally, and if you could benefit from extra function and more confidence where it counts, Blue Chew is the fast and easy way to enhance your performance. Most guys talk a good game, but Blue Chew helps you follow through. Blue Chew is prescribed online and shipped straight to your door in a discreet package, so no in-person doctor's visit, no waiting in line at the pharmacy, and best of all, no more awkwardness. They're made in the USA, and since Blue Chew prepares and ships direct, they're cheaper than a pharmacy. Right now, we've got a special deal for our listeners. Visit BlueChew.com and get your first shipment free when you use our special promo code SATURDAY. You just pay $5 shipping. Again, that's B-L-U-E-C-H-E-W.com. Promo code SATURDAY to try it free. Thanks so much to Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast this week. And remember, Blue Chew is the better, cheaper, faster choice. Snap to Mahomes at his belt. Sidestepping. Fires for the end zone. The pass is going to be caught. Touchdown, Kansas City. Patrick Mahomes. I thought he was just jumping in the stands and he grabbed a, he grabbed the camera. I was like, I was like, what the world? Firing down the seam. Tyreek Hill. 10, 5, touchdown, Kansas City. Set the tempo early, baby. Set the tempo early, baby. You are now listening to the official PM15 podcast. Presented by GASN Sports. Dedicated to NFL MVP Patrick Mahomes as he establishes his legacy and continues on his journey to bring a Super Bowl to Chiefs Kingdom. Featuring weekly guests, expert analysis, and fan interaction. Now, please welcome your hosts, Clint Schweitzer and Noah Groninger. Welcome once again to the official PM15 podcast. Clint Schweitzer alongside Noah Groninger here. And Noah, coming off what was a tremendous and um, really huge regular season win for the Kansas City Chiefs, 23-16 to over the New England Patriots, snapping their 21-game home winning streak. Man, it feels good right now, but it's almost like there's something missing because of the seeding. Currently, the Chiefs are the three seed, and unless they get some help, it could be a road to the Super Bowl that includes going back to New England and then to Baltimore. So there might be just a little hesitation when it comes to uh, starting to celebrate right now. A lot of football to be played, three games to go. Man, do you come away from that game feeling excited, invigorated, or, well, the fun is only just beginning? Well, I'm going to answer your question with a question. I know everyone loves that. Those are always fun. Um, Go back to the AFC Championship game last season, 50 touchdowns, MVP, high-flying offense. And what if I told you that not even a year later, less than a year later, the defense would be leading this team? Like, What are your thoughts about that and how this offense is just fledgling? They can't seem to find themselves, get in a rhythm, play a full 60 minutes, and now the defense went out and won us a football game. Yeah, you're right. Uh, This offense um, has been really hit and miss um, for the past several weeks. This goes back to Patrick Mahomes' injury uh, back in that Denver game. Uh, Matt Moore came in, and really the offense went really well considering Matt Moore was the starting quarterback. Uh, and then Patrick Mahomes comes back against the Titans and throws for over 400 yards. And you thought, well, this is how it's going to be. But since then, you're really not getting the production. We know that there's a, a extreme lack of a running game. We know the offensive line really hasn't played all that well, although it's finally healthy for the first time. Something just hasn't been right. Uh, Patrick Mahomes has been banged up. Uh, forget about the knee injury. Every single time he gets hit, he's holding something. He's limping. He's holding his chest. He's holding his hand. There's something that is just, he's, he's banged up. 
Uh, the ball isn't coming out with the same zip. Uh, the running game isn't giving you any help. And guess what else? The Chiefs have themselves a receiver problem. Travis Kelsey's just put in his fourth straight 1,000-yard season. That's great. He's been a tremendous target um, this whole season. Tyreek Hill, he's done his part. He uh, hasn't had a lot of the explosion, but guess what? He's been hurt as well, but he's been there to move the chains, especially against the Patriots. But where is anyone else? Where is Sammy Watkins? Where is Demarcus Robinson? Where is Byron Pringle? McCall Hardman started to exert himself, but you know what? McCall Hardman doesn't know this offense well enough to be on the field uh, for every snap. So when he's in the game, you know the ball's coming to him, and uh, he's done a good job when in that situation. Other than that, this offense just hasn't been in sync for quite a while, and it is troubling to me. Yeah, it really is, and you talk about it there, but we've seen McCall Hardman get a little more playing time. And when he's in there, you have to strike. I mean, if he's open, you've got to get him the ball because it's his snaps have been limited. And Sammy Watkins finally came on a little bit. At least he wasn't a complete ghost like he's been. Uh, He caught a few balls in that game against the Patriots. One of them a questionable first down, but we'll take it. And if this team wants to win the Super Bowl, if this team is going to win the Super Bowl, not only does this offense as a whole have to figure itself out, but if you want to break it down and look at a position group, uh, I don't think we can expect the running game to just come on and be world beaters. I, I just think that's out of the realm of reality right now. Uh, the offensive line kind of is what it is. It's healthy. It's good enough. It's not great. And But this receiver group, I, they are underperforming right now. I mean, of course, all the attention is going to be on Tyreek Hill, so he's – having to deal with a lot to try and carry the group, which he shouldn't have to do. Sammy Watkins is a talented enough receiver. He's from all that I've heard, all accounts, he's healthy. So he should be out there making plays, lots of plays because all the attention is on Travis Kelsey and Tyreek Hill. And while he's making a few, he needs to be more of an option. He needs to get open more and he needs to be more of that dynamic target. So we can really, have this offense open up as and now people are really starting to question like we had last year with Kareem Hunt and Sammy Watkins playing well when he was in there. You had defensive coordinators saying, I don't know what to take away. There's too much. I can't possibly take all this away. And now this season, they're just saying, oh, Tyree kill Travis Kelsey and they can't do anything else. We got it. And that cannot happen if we want to win a Super Bowl. McCall Hartman's going to have to play more snaps. They're going to have to trust him. They're going to have to put him out there and they're going to have to rely on him to be a real option on this offense the same with Sammy Watkins. He's got to come alive. He's got to earn all the money that we're giving him and he has not done it. He didn't do it last season enough to uh, warrant the massive contract that we gave him. And he's not earning his money this year and he's got to step up and he's got to do it as well as this entire offense just has to step up and start performing somewhere close to what they were doing last season because the defense has finally stepped up. We cannot have the offense drop off. And Oh, that's why we lost because Both sides of the ball can't be great at the same time. We've said it since the Marty Schottenheimer era and the Dick Vermeil era and then just horrible eras, Herm Edwards and Romeo Cornell, Todd Haley. But now the Andy Reid era, we cannot have both sides of the ball great at the same time. And it can't be because this offense just cannot carry their weight. That is inexcusable. Yeah, we saw the bubbles start to kind of form the t- uh, you know under the surface in that Colts game. Of course, this team has just been, it's been a strange team all season. There's been a lot of injuries. It's almost like I see the season in like different quadrants. Like the first you know four games where the Chiefs were four and zero, then the injuries set in, and you lose Patrick Mahomes, you lose uh, you, you know Tyree Kill after the you know first game. You just had a lot of injuries on the offensive line. Now Eric Fisher goes out. Frank Clark's been kind of in and out. So. It's like I view the season in like four game spurts. You had the uh, two and a half games where Mahomes missed. Uh, it's just been kind of a strange season. Like I can't. Uh, so that's why I think that we have to kind of forget about some of that stuff and look at the, the fact that the team's nine and four. They're currently the three seed. They have a chance to move up. And really, right now, all we have is to play for these last three games and, and for the playoffs. And that there's no reason why this team can't make a, a run for a Super Bowl. They've already beaten the Patriots and Ravens. Why not the Chiefs? I mean, is that too much? I know the defense, all we said was that they had to be uh, somewhat improved. They are. Um, So the Chiefs have every bit of a chance. They have a great chance to finish on a a six-game winning streak and be 12-4. and That'll either get you the three or the two seed. And uh, that's obviously far from some kind of a lost season where at some point we thought, oh my gosh, this season is just off the rails. 
Credit to Andy Reid and the coaching staff for getting this team kind of pieced together, duct taped, and uh, back into contention here, I think. Well, yeah, I mean, we can forget what happened early in the season all we want with the injuries and and just kind of what this team fought through with those injuries and trying to find themselves and piecemealing just spots on their offense and defense with uh, all these players in and out of the lineup. But the fact is, if we just want to break it down and look at what how this team is playing right now, I don't think it's good enough to win a Super Bowl with the offense playing like it is. Now, of course, part of that is going up against the Patriots, this vaunted defense. The Texans handled him, the Ravens handled him, and the Chiefs didn't. They did for a little bit there. They were looking good, but then they just they stalled, and they allowed the Patriots back in the game to where they could have gone to overtime. And I believe that we've done an overtime game with them recently, and I can't remember how it ended, but I don't think it ended well. And um, so just looking at this team right now, if we want to forget all the injuries and what happened earlier in the year— uh, they've got to find themselves on offense if they want to win a Super Bowl. If they don't, it's going to be an early exit. At some point, this franchise has to take that next step. There can't always be some mitigating circumstances to why they didn't make it. Last year, oh darn, D. Fords was offsides. Wait till next year. Oh, the next year, everybody's injured and Mahomes went down and the offense isn't the same, but the defense got better. Now next year, if the offense just gets back to where it was and the defense keeps improving, we just can't keep living in that world. I feel like too many Chiefs fans do, and that's where I hope that this regardless of where the seeding is, this team should get to the AFC Championship game. Bar none, no questions asked. In my opinion, this is AFC Championship. Uh, We heard our owner talk about Super Bowl or bust. I'm saying AFC Championship or complete bust. Yeah, I I get what you're saying there. Uh, I'm still with the owner, Clark Hunt, and it's uh, Super Bowl or bust, but I uh, just a complete, just horrible season. Things have gone so awry. If uh, this team goes out in the divisional round, doesn't even make it back to the AFC championship game, uh, which where it'll, I'm guessing it very well could be on the road in Baltimore. And, but I am still on Clark Hunt's train and saying Super Bowl or bust. This team has to figure it out. This team has to start getting some sort of chemistry and rhythm on offense and play a whole 60 minutes of high level offensive football and uh, the defense just has to keep continue their ways. They've still got to get better. They've still got to get more pressure on quarterbacks. Uh, but th- the secondary is playing outstanding. Charverius Ward, uh, we thought might be a Marcus Cooper or at the be- beginning of the season. Can he really live up to expectations and be a relied on starter? He can. Uh, Brashad Breeland, we saw what he was able to do. If he can just cut out the holding penalties, he'd be a really nice corner for us. Um the safeties in Thornhill and Matthew have played outstanding this season. The problem for me is that Rashad Fenton and Morris Claiborne were out last week, and we can't have that because Kendall Fuller, and I'll just throw him in there, although I think he's going to be, it's not because of injury. He's just always out there, and he can't be. Daniel Sorensen, Kendall Fuller are two pieces that were on this defense last year that are still here that cannot be on the field. They are awful in coverage. They're, they just lose the ball. They have no idea where it is. Uh, they're either creating penalties or just guys are running wide open. Daniel Sorensen isn't athletic enough. And Kendall Fuller just seems just like he's an, he's not confident as a player. And he just seems lost and just cannot get his head around, afraid to make a mistake out there. And so he makes just a massive mistake instead of even trying to make a play on the ball. He just lets them catch it and then tackles them. So... Uh, It's a mess when those two are out there. I know a lot of people were waiting for Kendall Fuller to come back from injury. Uh, I was hoping that he would stay out. Um, I don't wish ill on him or him to stay injured. I just, I just can't have him on the football field. Well, as we look back on this, obviously this podcast is called the official PM 15 podcast because we have the number one chiefs Facebook group, Patrick Mahomes fans. Um, This, (laughs) this podcast is based around the, uh, reigning league MVP Patrick Mahomes, uh, 50 touchdowns, 5,000 yards. We know what uh, Patrick Mahomes brought to this league. He put everybody on their heels. And now, uh, in year two, is there is there some kind of a disappointment factor? I mean, obviously, you look at his numbers right now, 3,200 yards, 21 touchdowns, three picks. He missed two and a half games. You're not going to discredit the numbers. I mean, they probably weren't going to be 50 and 5,000 again. But uh, do we look at... Uh, this season is as more of an outlier, like, okay, there were some injuries, or is this kind of what Patrick Mahomes is going to have to become 
um, living with more pedestrian numbers, uh, having to try to find, continue to find elite receivers and weapons for him to work with, or as or going forward, are we going to see that he's going to be able to command, uh, you know, <laughs> touchdowns in the forties, 4,000 plus yards every year. I mean, what, what are, what are our expectations for this quarterback going forward uh, after now a year and almost two? I think uh, when you talk about just differing things, most of the time it's a little of both. And that's kind of a boring answer, but that that's the answer here. It's a little bit of both. It is the mitigating factors of this season with the injuries, especially Mahomes' injuries to himself, uh, Tyreek Hill, the offensive line, uh, cutting Kareem Hunt last season, not having a running game this year that anyone fears or or that can get any rhythm or get going at all or have any sort of sustained success. And it's also, I worry about, even if he is healthy, not having enough weapons. Not having any run game at all is going to limit any quarterback out there. Also, having an aging tight end who's still at the top of, the, at the top of his game, but an aging tight end that... We don't know. Father time's undefeated. He could fall off at any moment. And then Tyreek Hill is your only real legitimate weapon out there. We need McCall Hardman to progress and become a legitimate weapon. Sammy Watkins is going to be gone after this season. We'll need to add more pieces. Obviously, a running back stands out. And I think we're going to need to add another receiver um, next to McCall Hardman, whether that's in free agency or the draft. I probably like free agency so we don't have to sit through another season of a young developing wide receiver, go out and get someone who's a name that can come in, learn the offense quick, and uh, get up to speed and really be someone Mahomes can rely on. And uh, I, so I think both things. I think Mahomes in this offense need to get healthy, and that's not going to come until next season. But I also think he needs more weapons to get back to an unbelievable explosive offense, record-setting, 50-touchdown, 5,000-yard kind of thing. And uh, one last point on you saying, I don't think we can look at these numbers and poo-poo them away. I think one of them we can't, the 21 touchdowns has been just shocking to me. How bad that they've been in the red zone has been shocking to me. And even though he did sit out two games, 21 is far too low for Mahomes and this offense uh, to be at in the kind of red zone numbers that they're putting up are, are very pedestrian and maybe even below that. So those two things have been shocking to me and, and hopefully that can start riding its way as we move it later into the season and into the playoffs. Well, uh, we sort of glossed over the fact that the Chiefs knocked off the Patriots. I mentioned it at the beginning, but when you look at it, as we, we've talked to this whole time uh, since Andy Reid got here about a changing of the guard. Can the Chiefs ever become that team that takes over and uh, to, sends the Patriots packing? They get this win at Foxborough, but is it be, we're not really breaking down this win Maybe because we're just already looking forward to a rematch at Gillette and knowing that we're going to have to go do this again, it seems very much like fool's gold to me, even though it was a huge win, a little bit of a fool's gold feel to me. Yeah, a regular season win that didn't mean a ton unless you're talking about uh, the Patriots possibly losing another game and getting the two seed than it does. So, uh, But that uh, takes some prognostication and looking forward uh, to seeing what could happen uh, as the Chiefs keep themselves alive for the two seed, only if the Patriots lose another game. And uh, yeah, looking forward to them. And not only, and it wasn't an impressive win, whereas it was, I believe, 23 to 13, we had the ball. I thought maybe we could blow the doors off this thing, really put our foots on their throat and saying, we're here. You're not going to beat us. We're coming into your home and gonna we're about to blow you out. It became a close game. The Patriots almost tied it there at the end. Uh, The wheels kind of fell off for the offense, not being able to move the ball, get first downs, sustain anything. So we left the door open for the Patriots. So that leads to a little bit of the uh, dampering of the excitement of a win in Gillette, which shouldn't be because any win in Gillette is historically almost impossible to do, especially for an AFC team uh, with a quarterback under the age of 25. It hasn't been done. So uh, we, we really shouldn't be. Maybe we're being a little pessimistic here. Uh, on the official PM15 podcast. But just looking at it, and even though we did beat the Patriots, the Ravens have overtaken and are the one seed and really blew out the Patriots. And and they're looking like the dominant team and uh, the team that everyone's talking about and that's going to win the Super Bowl and Lamar Jackson is going to win the MVP. And so those two things together, I think, do dampen it a little bit. Yeah, so um, as we kind of put a, put a ribbon on this week's podcast – 
Um, got to put your feet to the fire here because there's three games to go. You got Drew Locke, a quarterback that we know really well, uh, coming in here that we covered in high school, covered in college. Now he's uh, really providing a spark for the Denver Broncos. You got to go at Chicago, a Bears team that's won uh, I think three straight games. Mitch Trubisky looks at least serviceable, and then you finish up with the Chargers. What's this team's final record, and what is the final seeding uh, as we head into the playoffs? Yeah, I definitely think uh, the final seeding will be a, a three seed. I don't think the Patriots are going to lose. Uh, I hope I'm wrong. I hope the Bills can do it, uh, or the Bengals or Dolphins. Haha. <laughs> Insert joke here. Um, but the Chiefs are going to go undefeated the rest of the way. They will be twelve and four. Um, I am. Part of me wants to say I'm scared of Drew Lock coming in here, but that's kind of the easy thing to say with how he did uh, uh, playing against the Texans and the kind of performance he's had coming um, back from IR and coming in for the Broncos, taking over for not only Joe Flacco but then Brandon Allen, and uh, just how he's transformed their offense and how dynamic they've been with him in there, but. Uh, I think it's just going to be too much in Arrowhead with how great this defense is playing, how confident this defense is playing, especially after beating Tom Brady. Uh, out there on the field last, the game's in their hands. Bashad Breeland knocking the ball away. Uh, I think that just ups their confidence uh, even more, and they're feeling like, hey, we're not just the stepchild to this offense. I mean, we went out there and we won the game because of us. The defense led the way. The defense went in there and beat Tom Brady, beat Bill Belichick, and got that win. They're going to play unbelievably confident. This is Drew, only Drew Locke's third game in a hostile environment in Arrowhead Stadium against a defense playing at an all-time high, all-time confidence. I think it's going to be too much, and they're going to confuse and frustrate Drew Locke much of the day, and I think it's an easy win, and the Chiefs end up 12-4 and four the three seed. Yeah, um, it's um, easy to look at that right now. I think that uh, as of now, I would agree the way the Patriots are playing. I could see them losing that game to the Bills that are just a, you know, a tough team. You know, you, I like the way Singletary's running the ball. Josh Allen's capable. Um, we'll see. They did lose the first matchup in, in, uh, in Buffalo in Orchard Park. So uh, it might be a different story if the Patriots had to go to Buffalo. But that game will be in New England because they don't play road games. It's funny, they break a 21-game losing uh, home winning. The Chiefs break the Patriots' 21-game home winning streak, and you look at who they've lost to, you look at their schedule this year, and you saw, oh, well, prior to that, they'd lost to the Ravens and the Texans, the two teams they played that were good, away from uh, Foxborough. Um, And then the Chiefs were the only ones that actually went to Foxborough to win. I think there might be something to that. That gives you something to hang your hat on, at least, because they just don't play good teams at at Foxborough they're I mean they're when they're at home it just always seems like they're uh given the advantage they don't have to go on the road a lot and um you know kind of prove their mettle I don't know it's just my thoughts about the Patriots I'm I'm tired of them and I'm ready for it all to go away only for Baltimore Ravens and uh, John Harbaugh and Lamar Jackson to come up as this new beast to uh, stifle and uh, keep the Chiefs down and stand in their way. So uh, we're just going to have to go on the road and beat two great football teams uh, and then uh, go to the Super Bowl in, in Miami and beat another great football team, whoever comes out of the NFC. And and uh, so no one can say anything if the Chiefs go out and win the Super Bowl this year. They're going to earn it and then some. We're going to put a stamp on this week's podcast. Uh, back at you next week, I'm um, talking Chiefs and Broncos, and we're going to see where the playoff picture is following uh, that game next week. So thanks so much for joining us here on the official PM15 podcast. You can follow us on Twitter at PM15 podcast. Um, you can get our website, uh, GASNsports.com. That's where all of our articles and our podcasts are linked on that website, GASNsports.com. As far as this one goes, hit the subscribe button on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, or Spotify, any way you choose to take in the show. We just ask you leave a star rating and some feedback. We always appreciate it. Um, big show coming up next week is we're going to be uh, talking about the Broncos, Drew Locke, how the Chiefs did against this young up-and-coming quarterback, all coming next week here on the official PM15 podcast. <laughs>